What's up, short attention span history nerds? My name's Mike Perry, and you're watching 10 Minute History. World War II was a hell of a war. It started by Germany invading Poland. 50 million killed, hundreds of millions wounded, fought across six of our seven continents, produced the greatest generation that ever lived. But these are historical facts that every junior high student just paying half attention in class knows. The following facts, however, are not well known. Some of these facts have been covered up under need to know or top secret classification, and some were attempted cover-ups because of the embarrassment factor. But let's get to the reason you clicked on this video. Hitler's nephew was a United States sailor in World War II. One of Hitler's most ardent enemies during the war was his own nephew. Born in Liverpool in 1911 to Adolf's brother Alois, who was a different kind of scumbag himself for abandoning his family. William at first tried to leverage his uncle's political status and even tried to blackmail him into boosting his own political career. But when Uncle Adolf demanded he give up his British citizenship for Nazi citizenship and began his plan to rule the world, he fled Nazi Germany and wrote a magazine article called Why I Hate My Uncle. He later immigrated to the United States and served in the American Navy from 1944 to 1947 and was even decorated for his bravery in conflict. He eventually changed his name to William Patrick Stewart Houston, very smart, and lived a quiet, obscure life in the United States, passing away in 1987. One soldier fought World War II for 30 years. Hiro Onoda was a Japanese soldier who fought World War II until 1974. Now that's commitment to the job. Sent on a mission to the Philippines and ordered never to surrender or take his own life, Onoda refused to believe the war had ended in 1945 and literally took to the hills with a few other officers for company. Since they didn't believe that the war was over, they carried out guerrilla warfare against local citizens well after the war had ended, leading to several deaths. One of Onoda's men just walked away in 1950 and gave up. The other two were killed off in skirmishes and attacks over the years. The Japanese government was working with the Philippine government to get Onada to surrender. They dropped leaflets, made loudspeaker announcements, and even taped letters to cows and goats informing Onada that the war was over. Finally, after 30 years, alone and desperate but undefeated, Onada was eventually found in 1974 by this weirdo named Norio Suzuki, who was looking for Onada but he was also looking for a panda and the abominable snowman. I'm not kidding. Google Nori Suzuki, you'll find out. Suzuki told the 50-year-old soldier that the war had ended 30 years ago. Onoda said he would not leave until officially relieved from duty by his commanding officer. Fortunately, his commanding officer, Tanaguchi, was still alive. Tanaguchi officially relieved Onoda of duty on March 9th, 1974. George H.W. Bush was almost eaten by cannibals. George H.W. Bush, the future 41st President of the United States, narrowly avoided a gruesome fate when his plane was shot down during a bombing raid against Japan. Bush was able to bail out and parachute into the ocean. He was later picked up by the USS Finback, but all of Bush's fellow airmen, as well as other airmen shot down during the raid, were captured by Japanese officers. Once taken to the POW camp, the Japanese proceeded to torture, execute, cook, and eat them in one of the grisliest war crimes of the whole conflict known as the Chichijima Incident. Oddly enough, there was no military or international laws against cannibalism, so the Hannibal Lecter soldiers were tried for murder and given a light sentence. One German city came up with a pretty smart and ingenious way of dodging Allied bombing raids during the war. You see, during World War II, the German government ordered that all homes and businesses cut off the lights once the sun went down. Now, this was to make it almost impossible for Allied bombers to accurately bomb their assigned targets. It's way to safety. Konstanz, a small city close to the Swiss border, decided to keep its lights on all night rather than enforce the usual blackout. And the bluff paid off. Allied pilots flying overhead assumed they were flying over Switzerland and spared it from their bombs. One British officer 
became legendary. One of the most celebrated soldiers in World War II was Adrian Carton de Wayart, a flamboyant figure who had already seen action in the Boer War and World War I. Regarding World War I, he remarked, frankly, I enjoyed the war. During his many battles, he was shot in the face, skull, leg, and hip, lost his left eye, and one of his hands in the process. He also tore off several of his own fingers when doctors refused to amputate them. So, pretty much he was just a thumb. Despite his advancing in years, he was eager to play his part in kicking some Hitler butt. During a mission to Europe, his plane crash-landed and he was captured by Italian fascists. The 60-something-year-old veteran then nonchalantly escaped from the POW camp and went incognito for days, despite his striking appearance. As one account described him, with his black eye patch and the empty sleeve, Carton D. Ward looked like an elegant pirate and became a figure of legend. In his memoirs, Carton D. Weart wrote, Governments may think and say as they like, but force cannot be eliminated, and it is the only real and unanswerable power. We are told that the pen is mightier than the sword, but I know which one of these weapons I would choose. It's been said that when God made Carton D. Weart, he went to break the mold, but Chuck Norris used it before God broke it. A single ship was sunk twice during the war. Originally called the SS Ween, it served in the Australian Navy during World War I, and it was sunk in 1918 by a torpedo. A few years later, it was raised from its watery grave, patched up, and put back into service. This time, it was owned by Italy. As World War II began, it served as a hospital ship for Mussolini's forces. Early into the war, it was attacked and sunk by Allied torpedoes, again and became the only ship to have ever been sunk in both wars. A spy led the Nazis on a wild goose chase. One of the most colorful characters of the war was a habitual liar named Juan Pujol Garcia, a Nazi spy. In reality, he was a double agent for the British and specialized in feeding the Germans false information. While his Nazi bosses believed he lived in Britain, Garcia actually went to Portugal and just made up his reports from the UK, despite knowing very little about British life and culture. He was just making it up out of thin air. The Germans were impressed, despite Garcia's many cultural blunders. In one report, he said that the Scottish would do anything for a liter of wine, not knowing the drinking habits of the Scots or that they didn't use the metric system. The few times his stories were found to be false, he blamed the information on subordinate agents that didn't exist and assured the Germans that they would be dealt with severely. Garcia even invented a Welsh fascist movement known as the Brothers of the Aryan World Order who apparently operated out of Swansea. All in all, Garcia invented 27 sub-agents and the German government funded them. All 27 were Garcia. When the war had ended, Garcia had been awarded medals by both the British government and the Nazi government. The Nazis wanted to create a space weapon. This one's actually funny. German scientists were genuinely interested in building a sun gun. And when I say a sun gun, I mean a giant magnifying glass in space. That's right, the Germans were inventing a Looney Tunes space weapon. I wonder if they got any help from Marvin Martian. The idea was actually based on the idea of German physicist Hermann Oberth. The glass was intended to concentrate beams of sunlight to scorch cities and boil the seas. And if that didn't work, they would just sit there and burn little ants on a hill. It wouldn't have been much use against the Allies though. As the Nazis calculated it, it would take up to a century to make, which we still haven't hit. It's only been roughly 70 years since World War II ended. So if the Nazis had actually won the war, they'd just now be in their final stretch of building their gigantic magnifying glass. A life pod was made for Winston Churchill. Doctors were so concerned about a man of Churchill's age and condition being flown at high altitudes that a special pressurized life pod was created to, in the words of a news report, protect the precious bulk of Winston Churchill. Remember that this was early but not that early in the air travel. So the report was still out on whether fat people should fly. As the report went on to say, the pod was designed so that he could lull comfortably about like an outsized pill within a giant oyster shell. 
Sadly, the pod was too large to actually fit inside Churchill's plane and was apparently never used. So he flew coach like the rest of us and complained about the narrow seats and that that kid wouldn't stop opening up the damn window shade just to see how high up he is. The plane's high up there, boy. It's above the clouds. Quit opening the window shade and watch your iPad. More Russian soldiers died in a single battle than all the British and American soldiers in the entire war. The largest confrontation of World War II, the bloody Battle of Stalingrad, lasted from July 1942 to February 1943. It began with Germany's attempt to capture the city and included air attacks and house-to-house -house fighting, with reinforcements constantly streaming into the city from both sides as tens of thousands were killed. Though the axis of power suffered between 650,000 and 868,000 military casualties, in the entire war, the U.S. lost 407,300 military personnel and the, and the Brits lost 383,700. But the Soviet Union lost more than 1.1 million people in that single battle. So that's 10 fascinating facts about World War II. If you've made it this far, consider subscribing to 10 Minute History and leaving a thumbs up. Also tap the bell icon so you never miss an upload. Until next time. Hundreds of gazillions of billions. Started by Germany, invaded Poland. Oh man, invaded, not invaded, invading. British citizenship. Well, that's a lot to try to say. British citizenship. Why can I not say this? <laughs> I wrote it. One ship had a particularly unlucky time during the war. Originally called the US, not the USS, it was an Australian ship.